Well, it's hard to imagine that we're in module six, but we are at the, uh, at the end of this change process. Throughout the course, we've discussed the art and science of change. Change initiatives will not be successful unless we are able to analyze information within and outside the organization. Change leaders have to be able to complete analysis at various levels throughout the, the change process in order to initiate and to ensure success for the initiative. Throughout the course, we have looked at the change path model. And the final um, step of this path is institutionalization. So we're tracking and measuring the change process over time to assess progress, make modifications as needed, and manage risk. It's a continual uh, improvement. So you're constantly looking and assessing. And it's important for change leaders to have the skill uh, to be able to analyze. It's actually a critical skill. Institu then we move to institutionalizing the change through, this, through systems. And this is where Lewin talks about refreezing. So the final step focuses on the tracking and the measurement and the controls that are in place to allow for changes that are necessary and to minimize the risk in the process. We measure change, uh, measuring change uh, by designing effective control systems, tracking and measuring the change over time to assess progress, to make sure uh, and to make modifications as they're needed to ensure that there is a minimal risk throughout the change process. So the measurement is crucial to the change process. The care that's taken in the selection of the measures that help focus energy and effort, uh, they help to enhance and provide the efficiencies and effectiveness that are important uh, for the change. They are also, there's this an opportunity to provide an early warning, warning system to see if something's going wrong and to redirect to make sure that in the middle of the, you know, mid course, if there's anything that you can kind of turn the boat, you can redirect and still stay on the, uh, the goal of the actual change. This will help clarify uh, what will be accomplished and what it will uh, take to bring these things to reality. The careful selection and use of metrics um, are, are crucial, and it's important to spend the time in the beginning to make sure uh, that you have these things scoped out so that you can track and have the controls in order before you even start this process. So it's important to select measures and controls that are relevant, that are fair, that will not be perceived as coercive in any way or forced upon anyone. It's important to align uh, the measures with the environment. So they want to make sense. The, you want to make sure that they're fluid. There should be a clear understanding of what to measure, how to deploy the measures, who to involve in the process, and how to interpret and use the data to manage the change. This should be clear before you even begin the process. So when you're choosing me measures, you want to focus on the key factors. You want to make sure that uh, the leading, you, you, you use measures that lead to challenging, but they're achievable, they're realistic goals, and that the measures and controls, again, are perceived as fair. You don't want anybody to feel in any way uh, a stressor or undue stressor uh, for the, from the measures, and you want to make sure everybody agrees upon them. Otherwise, you can um, send mixed signals, and you really want to avoid this. Yeah, this accuracy, the usefulness of the data, and to be able to uh, discuss data so that people understand and it's non-threatening uh, is important. The measures should be simple, uh, and they should address the important elements of the change in a balanced way. Change leaders should reinforce the appropriateness of the measures and instill confidence in their proper applications to ensure that there is trust in this process. So we've talked about a lot of things, the art, the science, the importance of processes, of policies, of uh, procedures, all of these different things. Now let's just take time to reflect a little bit on what we have learned. Change leaders need to possess a variety of skill sets. Leaders need to adapt, they need to be able to compromise, reevaluate situations, uh, assess you know, different situations, always keep an open mind, uh, be the, in the forefront of the change, almost be cheerleaders in a sense, encouraging people. And during this, all this time, you still have to keep focused on the change vision. 
have to be quick on your feet. You have to be able to listen to people when there's advice or when there's warning or cause for warning. The change process causes us to focus on what is going on and what is needed. So we are looking at the here and now as well as the future. So we have to live both of these things and we have to develop the skills to manage the change, which will add value to the organization. And really when you develop these skills, being a change agent, being a successful change agent can really enhance your career and opportunities. So we have to make sure we orient ourselves to this organizational change and perspective is really important with this. We also have to recognize that people's perceptions are critical. The perception of the, the benefits, the cost, the risk, all of these different things are really important in this. Understand that your perception is only one of many. And every single person thinks a little differently. Remember when we did our the strengths assessment, each one of us is so uniquely wired, we have to understand this. We also have to have find or figure out the way that we gather people as we go, how we bring people on board with this process. Pull people with a powerful change vision, push people through argument and rewards when you need to, but really gaining the support through their hearts and minds is often the better way. So you gain an active uh, pursuit of your, your vision. You, it's really important to get that. If you do something, you will get responses and learn. We also have to have a, a plan that's oriented around the change vision. It has to make sense. And when you move forward in such a, a change, it, it's important to do this in a positive manner. Actions that suck the energy that uh, threaten or appear coercive are really difficult to sustain. So growing your energy as a change agent is important. To start meaningful change, you, need, you only need a few believers, but as you continue, you want to gather the momentum to bring other people on board as, you know, until a critical mass of key participants are on, on board. And there are many routes to your goal. You find the ones with the least resistance, resistance that will allow you to proceed with integrity. So regardless of your role in an organization, you'll experience change. Whether you are mandated to participate or you volunteer for a change role, you take on an advisory role or you serve on an implementation team. Regardless, we all are involved with change. So our attitude and our perspective are crucial to that success. We have to understand that change is an inevitable. To be successful, it's important to continue to develop your skills and understanding of it an ever-changing environment and how you go into this with your mindset, with your positive attitude makes a difference. So we have to remember that leading change will bring you many things. It's frustrating, it's invigorating, it's humbling, it's empowering. You, it's hap One minute you're happy and another minute you can be sad. It's full of joy and there's fulfillment. There's so many different things but there's definitely struggles. By leading change, you do, you change yourself and the lives of those around you. So it's important to keep that in the front of your mind as you're doing this, because sometimes we wonder why, why do we want to do this? But when we think about it, that we're changing ourselves, the lives of those around us and the organization, it truly makes it worthwhile. So at this point, you should have a good understanding of your, or your thoughts on change, what you like, what you don't like, of your frustrations about the change process, all of these things we've been looking at and really looking uh, in, inside. And so you should have this understanding and make sure you always check yourself, keep this in mind and remember that we're changing too. So this is only the beginning. The more you invest in the change process, the more you will learn about yourself, your team and the organization. And finally, progress is impossible without change. And those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. So I leave that with you to remember that no matter what we do, we're constantly changing. As you're in this course, you're changing because the more you're learning, the more you're reflecting, the more you're changing. And those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything.